A Tesla patent application was recently published that describes using a super fibrilized binder during dry electrode manufacturing. And interestingly, it appears to be a copy paste from a patent that Maxwell Technologies applied for back in 2017 that has since been granted. Nonetheless, despite this being a copy paste um, from a previously granted Maxwell Technologies uh, patent, I do believe there's good information here to go ahead and review this, um, what's revealed in this patent application. And I also see it as a good sign that Maxwell Technologies, their process, does work. So let's dive into the details. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Manufacturing battery electrodes using Maxwell Technologies dry process has not been as smooth as Tesla would have hoped, and Tesla is quite a bit behind their original goals. As Elon mentioned as recently as March 1st of this year at Tesla's Investor Day event, the dry electrode problem is really quite a hard problem. Elon also said at that event, quote, we acquired Maxwell really just for the dry electrode technology, but just illustrates what a gigantic gap there is between something working at small scale and at large scale. So apparently when Tesla acquired Maxwell Technologies, they believed it'd be a little bit more of a copy paste, um, basically taking the technology, basically taking the technology that Maxwell had and um, just copying and pasting that over to their own production lines. That has not been the case, obviously, and it's taken a little more work to adapt it. But nonetheless, Tesla is making good progress with this dry process, as Drew made very clear at their March 1st investor day, and 4680 batteries as a reminder, with at least dry process manufactured anodes are being used in a production vehicle, of course the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y, and these battery packs appear to be functioning just fine. Now beyond the anode side, it's unclear how well this dry electrode manufacturing process is working on the cathode side because Tesla has been quite quiet about that and really the only info that we've received somewhat recently was when Drew Baglino mentioned that comment about not stalling out. Nonetheless, despite some adaptation, um, the basic process that Tesla acquired from Maxwell appears to be working because Tesla recently filed this patent application, which once again appears to be a copy paste from a patent applied for in 2017 by Maxwell Technologies that has since been granted. Now, I don't know enough about patent law to know why Tesla would go ahead and refile for a patent. I assume that when Tesla acquired Maxwell Technologies, they also got access to their patents, but maybe since Tesla acquired them in 2019 and this patent was actually granted in uh, 2021, maybe that didn't completely apply there and they needed to go ahead and refile for this. Nonetheless, it's interesting that they did refile for this, and once again, it shows me that the process does work, or I don't believe Tesla would have messed with it. Now, there is a possibility that this allows Tesla to hold that technology for a longer period of time before the patent expires. But nonetheless, I would like someone, if you're watching this video and you know more about patent law and you know why Tesla would want to do something like this, do let me know in the comments section below. I would love to know, and I'm sure others watching this video would like to know as well. But once again, if the process didn't work and if Tesla had to change it so much that it wasn't anywhere close to what Maxwell originally patented, I don't believe Tesla would have bothered with applying for this again. So with that being said, let's go ahead and briefly dive into what is described in this patent application. Now, I'm not going to dive into every detail in this patent application uh, because that can get very laborious and I believe it's unnecessary. But I did want to talk about something that this patent application brings up, and I believe this is really one of the big keys of this patent application, and that's the mention of dry, super fibrilized binder particles. I've used the term fibrilized in the past, but I haven't come across this super fibrilized term before. Um, but apparently this super fibrilized binder process leads to performance benefits in batteries or in capacitors. Um, but what is it and how does it improve performance? Now, first of all, when it comes to what fibrilization is, fibrils are basically long, narrow fibers. 
So my understanding is, and someone correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, but I understand this to mean that the binder particles are elongated and made very long and thin, such that they are long and thin enough to be able to more wrap around the active electrode particles and bind them together. So Tesla is doing a process that not only fibrilizes the particles, but super fibrilizes them. And I'll talk more about that. There is a brief description in this patent application about that process. Now in the past, I shared information about dry electrode manufacturing from a battery expert that I had emailed and I had a little bit of email communication with this expert. And I asked specifically about what makes um, dry battery electrode manufacturing so difficult. This expert responded that quote, wet processing with a solvent allows the binder which acts like a glue to lay around all the particles and bind them together properly just by mixing them. Dry coating requires high temperatures to somehow get the binder more flexible. The binder also has to be fibrilized, otherwise there is no way it could wrap around the particles. Now when it comes to how super fibrilized binder particles are achieved when it comes to the manufacturing process of that, apparently this process involves um, fibrilizing the binder particles, reducing them, and then refibrilizing them. This patent application also goes on to describe higher pressure being used and a lower feed rate, a lower speed um, during this process. And I'm not sure if the super fibrilized binders require both of these techniques together, the fibrilizing, reducing, and refibrilizing, and the higher pressure, or if it's like an either or thing that both result in um, super fibrilized binders, but maybe have different applications. Nonetheless, I found this very interesting. And in addition, uh, these super fibrilized binders have some big benefits for battery performance. These super fibrilized binder particles apparently strengthen the electrode film and allow for less binder to be used, which I understand to be inactive materials that don't add to the capacity of the finished battery. So by having less binder particles, this would allow for more active materials to be um, in that electrode film. And thus that would in theory, based on my understanding, increase the energy density of the battery. So basically you're reducing the amount of binder and that would allow you to have more active materials in that electrode film without um, getting thicker electrodes or you could actually have slightly thinner electrodes that hold the same amount of capacity as a thicker electrode with more binder. So this actually has good benefits when it comes to how much energy that can be stored in a cell. Now interestingly enough, when it comes to these super fibrilized binders, helping to increase the energy density of a battery. Apparently this process is necessary if you wanna keep the battery capacity on par with the capacity of a battery manufactured with the wet process method. Because this patent application describes the fact that the wet electrode process, generally speaking, allows for thinner electrodes then with the dry process that is not involving um, these super fibrilized binder particles. So once again, this is an important piece of this dry electrode manufacturing in order to keep um, the capacity of those batteries on par with what a wet process would normally result in. Hopefully in Tesla's next earnings call coming up later on this month, we'll hear more about Tesla's progress on their dry electrode manufacturing and how that's going. Um, but nonetheless, this is encouraging to me that Tesla would go ahead and file for this copy paste of this Maxwell technology here because apparently this process, once again, does work. Tesla has a lot riding on the success of 4680 batteries and um, they, they do have workarounds and they are sourcing batteries from a lot of other companies, but I believe the 4680 battery is really still key to their success in the future. And when it comes to the massive volumes they want to do. And this dry process, once again, is a big key to making 4680 batteries, um, bringing the cost down of manufacturing and uh, really just mass producing those because it allows Tesla to produce these batteries in a smaller factory than would be necessary. I would love to hear from you about this in the comments section below, what you think about all this. Um, and once again, if you know more about patent law than I do, 
and you have something to share about that, please let us know in the comments section below. I also would like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description so you can find out more. Until next time, thanks for watching.